Coming to you from DevNexus 2020 in Atlanta, Georgia, I'm Bob Rupert with the Oracle Groundbreakers team, and my guest is Gerald Wenzel. Gerald, how are you? Very good. Thanks for having me, Bob. So to start off, uh, tell me what you do for Oracle. I'm a database product manager, actually, as my uh, day job, and I focus on application development with databases, so I do a lot of DevRel activities like this right now. And so you're bringing that insight and knowledge to this event. Uh, you've got a session here. Tell me about that session. Yeah, so the session was called Supercharge Your Code for Optimal Database Performance. And really what it is, it's kind of a best practices or like how to avoid anti-patterns with database sessions. So I found over the years, like even when I was a developer before I joined Oracle, that a lot of people don't really know anymore how to use databases. And they're around for a long, long time, right? And a lot of times they, the, they think databases are slow. And regardless whether, which database it really is, but they think databases are slow. And really what they're doing is they're just writing the wrong code for interactive with it optimal. And so this session is just going over a couple of these anti-patterns and a live demo and showed them how they can tune uh, SQL statements from something that took tens of seconds down to 100 milliseconds just by changing three lines of code in the end. Wow. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, it always is received really, really well. So it's kind of like in a beginner introduction talk, but also the well-seasoned people enjoy seeing it again. The live demo always adds some effect. But, you know, it really just tells you one of the most common anti-pattern is like you go back and forth uh, the network to and from the database, right? So it's like you talk to a database, you get a piece of data, you do something, you go again, and you just keep going back and forth. Like other people call it the revolving door pattern. It's like basically what you're doing is nothing. The app sport, the database is bored, you're just spending your time on the network going back and forth. So, you know, things like that. And you show them in, in in a real world kind of demo scenario where you take the times and everything and you show them, okay, so now let's just change this line of code. Let's not do this in a for loop, let's do it outside or whatever. And, and then you just see how it immediately drops in time and how you actually get CPU spinning up and doing stuff and everything gets faster. Let's talk about what's going on in the Oracle database world. Uh, from your perspective as a product manager, what's new, what's happening? Yeah, so a big thing that we are working on right now is to finally take databases out of the mind of the developers. So I just said before, like a lot of times developers go, they deal with the database and go, well, this thing is just slow, you know, and they don't really know what to do, and neither should they, right? They should basically not have to worry about the database, but we all have to. It's like slow query, is there an index on or not? So one thing that Oracle is working on heavily right now is this autonomous database con concept. And essentially, it's an exiteration of database. So what we have in Oracle since a long, long time is we had very sophisticated tuning advices. You could run them, the database would uh, continuously uh, monitor the workload, I would know exactly exactly what's going on, where the time is spent, et cetera. And then since about 10 years already, you could actually go into an Oracle database and say, okay, run this tuning advisor for my SQL statement and let me know what would be the best course of action. And we'll tell you things like, okay, maybe create an index there or partition your table, all this stuff that kind of DBAs like to do, right? And, and DBAs are usually really good at, but they then never really know the workload. So we're in this odd world where it's like the developers go like the database is slow, I have workload, but I don't really know what to do on the database side. And DBAs go like, well, I wouldn't know what to do on the database side, but I don't know what the workloads are like, so I cannot really apply the right course to action. And we want to make the world different for everybody, oh, easier actually for everybody. So with autonomous database, we're going to the next step where we say, okay, so we use those techniques, we, we apply machine learning in the, inside the database on those workloads and predict the best outcomes. So things like databases in, in already actually in Oracle and uh, since a couple of months and in the near future, they will be able to just create indexes themselves. So you don't have to worry about indexes anymore. Like is query is slow, whatever, the database will create an index, right? Your, your workload changes, well, the database will go like, okay, I'll throw away this index. I don't no longer need it, right? Your workload changes again, it will add the index and all this stuff. And uh, Oracle has spent a lot of time to make all of this seamless um, and, and online or transparent to the application. So creating this stuff has no impact to your application. You, it doesn't stop your workload where you go like, okay, Okay, we have to now stop everything, create an index, and off you go. But you know, it, it goes further than that as well. So it's like index creation is one thing, but repartitioning your data on disk for actually which data to load into, into memory already proactively, et cetera, et cetera. So the near future will actually look really bright for databases, for relational databases especially. I think they will have a huge comeback. Um, and you know, it's essentially and, uh, the way I explain it to developers, like I usually ask the question, right, who of you had to deal with a slow query? 
once in your life as a developer, and usually every hand goes up, right? It's like, and who of you liked having to deal with the slow query and figuring out why it's slow, right? And, and still every hand kind of like, yeah, nobody, right? So it's like every hand goes down and it's like nobody ever liked that. And so we kind of, well, this will just all disappear and you can just start using your database, start using your data. Don't worry about what's happening on the back end. It will all take care, be taken care for you. Uh, so that you can really just focus on your app. And that's really what you want to do, right? You want to write this code, you want to get done. You don't want to have to run off and do performance tuning, troubleshooting, whatever stuff. We are several weeks away from the 25th anniversary of Java. Uh, from your perspective as a database guy, what's the significance? I think it's a really big, um, it's the right word for this, um, a really big compliment for Java that it, it turned 25 years. So sometimes when we when we discuss like, oh yeah, you know, it's like, is it really a good thing that you want to say it's 25 years or we're the same with Oracle database, like 40 years, uh, you know, it's like makes you look old, etc. I think, no, it's the opposite, right? It's actually a huge compliment for Java. Why? Because it's 25 years that Java has been around. It's the de facto programming language on the back end, right? It's like, the, obviously, you know, there's different services, et cetera, but still, Java is everywhere, right? Like, even here at Def Nexus, right? It, and, and it remains there since 25 years. There's not a lot of technologies that actually survive the test of time, right? Especially in this fast-moving world. It's like there's technologies that come and go these days, right? It's like, oh, it's really hip now, and four years later, yeah, nobody's doing this anymore, right? It's like we moved on to other stuff. And so it's a, it's a huge, huge thing for Java to have turned 20, not only to have turned 25 years, but still being the number one programming language out there, actively being used, actively being enhanced, and alive for 25 years. So it's a huge compliment there, huge congrats there to the team as well that, that gives us Java, right? Or the community yeah. that gives us Java. So this is a significant milestone, but certainly not the last milestone for Java. No, I don't think so. I mean, there's so much going on in the Java world as well, right? So I'm also a big fan of of Graal VM, <laughs> right? Of the language itself. Actually, before my life in Oracle, I was a Java developer happened to work with Oracle databases. So that was kind of my background there. So huge Java fan. Uh, language is actively being enhanced, right? We went to this uh, six month release cycles now to get innovation out faster. That's a great step forward as well. And then we have exciting things happening like the Graal VMs, you know, making making Java even faster, give us native compiled images, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a, a huge raft of stuff going on with Java and around Java, right? It's like not even to talk about all the frameworks that are built on top of Java as well, right? It's like, it will be a whole other world of this, whole conferences around this. So yeah, it's uh, definitely not the last milestone. It's, the future is really bright for Java and I'm really looking forward to it. Having just, having the luxury of having seen a little bit inside what's actually go, going to happen. I'm super thrilled. <laughs> well, Gerald, thank you for talking to me and thank you for watching. For the Oracle Groundbreakers team, I'm Bob Rubart. Stay tuned.